welcome to Everything Economics. We study microeconomics, macroeconomics, and every other type of economics here. Welcome back everyone. In this part, we will discuss who benefits from inflation. In the previous part, we discussed who loses from inflation. But here, we are going to discuss the other way around. Normally, when we hear about inflation, we are only thinking about that Inflation is bad and it's uh, everyone loses from inflation. That's what we generally uh, normally think, uh, but that's not true. Uh, most of the times um, people lose from inflation, but there are certain groups who also gain from inflation. And we are going to discuss those groups in this part. And uh, uh, yeah, you might have noticed that I have changed the resolution and uh, instead of a box, Resolution now we have a landscape resolution that is not of uh, that now we have a 169. I think it might be more user friendly and uh, I hope so. Anyway, uh, now let's get on with the uh, content. The first group of people who gain from inflation are called debtors. Uh, the question naturally arises is that who are these debtors? Debtors are people who take money from other people uh, in in the form of a loan so whenever there is loan involved the person who is taking the loan is called a debtor and the person who is giving money in the form of loan is called a creditor so debtors gain from inflation because they repay creditors with dollars that are worth less in terms of purchasing power A debtor could be an individual who is taking loan from his friend or it could be an individual who is taking money from uh, a loan from a bank or it could even be a government who is taking or uh, borrowing money from another government so uh, so these are different uh, uh, these are different forms of debtors and the money that they are taking from they are called creditors and creditors could be banks individuals or even the governments right uh, so Whenever an individual is taking money from another from a person or a bank, then when when he repays that money back to the bank or uh, or another person, the value of that money is less than when it was before, and the value of that money decreases because of inflation. Whenever there is inflation, the real value of money decreases because the money cannot purchase the exact same amount of things than it could have purchased before so uh, I mean we are talking about the purchasing power of money right here and uh, the dollar hundred that we have in our pocket right now would not purchase the same amount of goods and services two years from now in the future the purchasing power of money decreases in future because there is inflation the, uh, the general price level in the economy increases to understand this <clears throat> part we will uh, see an example in the example uh, let's say that this is your friend and this is you your friend is giving money to you okay so your friend is creditor and you are a debtor you take dollar 120 from a friend in 2018 the year is 2018 and you borrowed 120 dollars from your friend uh, to uh, make it more clear we will use the example that we used previously in the last part of a table so the price of table in 2018 is dollar eight uh, dollar ten the price of the same table in 2019 increases to dollar twelve because of inflation is the same table but due to inflation or the rising prices uh, the the price of the table has increased by two dollars in 2019 the question is how many tables could you purchase in 2018 and in 2019 with the same amount of dollars that is 120 dollars your friend could have purchased 12 tables with those 120 dollars in 2018 here i've done the calculation here you divide 120 dollars by 10 dollar that is the price of one table in 2018 and you get 12 tables if your friend had not given that money to you, he could have purchased 12, of, uh, 12 tables in 2018. But he has given the money to you. And because he's your friend, normally friends don't, uh, uh, I mean, they don't take interest. So if you took $120, they normally take, take back $120. So we are not in, uh, talking about interest in this case. 
and uh, next year in 2019 you return those 120 dollars back to your friend you're the debtor he's the creditor as a debtor you return those 120 dollars back to the creditor so the question is will he be able to purchase the same number of tables with 120 dollars now in 2019 the price is dollar 12 right here in 2019 of the same tables he has the same amount of dollars that he had before that is 120 dollars what will happen here it is 120 divided by 12 now he can only purchase 10 tables last year he could have purchased 12 tables if he, if he had not given that uh, those 120 dollars to you but now when you return those 120 dollars he can only purchase 10 tables so he has lost two tables right this means that due to inflation the purchasing power of 120 dollars or the real value of 120 dollars has decreased because it cannot purchase the same amount of tables now than it could last year in 2018 so now you can only purchase 10 tables and uh, as a debtor you have gained but as a creditor your friend has lost so debtors always gain when whenever there is inflation because uh, the 120 dollars that you have taken from your friend that you have borrowed from your friend and when you return it later on one year later the real value of those 120 dollars has decreased these 120 dollars its value has decreased in 2019 and when you return those 120 dollars uh, your friend would lose but you will gain because you're the data and you're not paying interest in this case so whenever there is inflation the debtors always gain another group that benefits from inflation is governments with debt if a government has taken debt from public then they can gain due to inflation for example governments sold low interest bonds when inflation was low so if the inflation increases then the real value of government debt will reduce this is similar to uh, the previous example so the government it has taken uh, loan from the public and how do they take loan uh, they can use government bonds so government uh, gives away bonds and the public they can purchase those bonds and uh, uh, I mean the government will pay, uh, will pay interest on that on those bonds so if the inflation was low when the government sold those bonds then uh, I mean uh, uh, later on when the inflation rate would be higher the government would be gaining from this because the real value of the loan that they have taken from the public the real value of that loan would be decreasing so the real value of government debt will also reduce at the same time so whenever there is inflation the real value of government debt will always reduce this is similar to uh, the previous point uh, uh, the case of debtors uh, who always gain from inflation the government in this case is the debtor and the public is the creditor government is borrowing money from the public so when there is inflation the real value of the government debt will reduce and the creditors that is the public the general public will lose because they are the creditors so all right so moving on the next group uh, that will gain from inflation are the people who sell necessities necessities are goods which uh, you need to survive uh, they could be food or something else that you would need to uh, survive or live your life customers uh, in these goods customers don't care uh, much about the price of necessities they need these goods and services to survive so for example if we have uh, vegetables if the price of vegetables increases then the, these are necessities you need to eat so you would uh, you would still purchase these vegetables even if there is inflation and the same is the case with rice or wheat or flour uh, these are the things that people need to survive and uh, if the price of these goods and uh, goods and services increase that is the necessities prices increase then uh, the people who sell these necessities they are uh, they will also be gaining they are also the benefactors from inflation they also uh, benefit from uh, the general increase in the price level 
So a shopkeeper who sells these goods, when the price of these goods increase, then he will benefit from uh, from that, right? All right. So uh, the next group is the people who have stock in hand. So uh, for example, there is a supermarket uh, like a Walmart or a Hyperstar, and these supermarkets have. Uh, let's say a thousand packets of sugar uh, in their stock. Uh, I mean, they have purchased thousand sugar uh, packets of sugar uh, that they want to sell, and uh, the price of uh, the sugar uh, was dollar one before, uh, but now the price has increased to dollar one point one due to inflation. There are thousand packs, sugar packets. Sugar price increases from dollar one to dollar one point one due to inflation. So, what will happen to the revenues of Walmart or Hyperstar in this case? Because the sugar is now more expensive, uh, they will gain. And how much they will gain is one thousand packets into the increase due to inflation. That is zero point one. When we multiply that, you get dollar one hundred. So these supermarkets like uh, uh, Walmart or Hyperstar, so these superstores, uh, these uh, they had a thousand packets of sugar uh, in stock, and uh, the, as the price of sugar increased from one to dollar one point one due to inflation, the their gains from uh, uh, selling sugar will increase automatically because uh, the, the price of sugar is increased by zero point one when you multiply it by thousand, uh, they will gain. Uh, the value of uh, the sugar stock will increase by $100. Uh, I mean, uh, the stock in hand. Uh, the value of that will increase. So, the people who have stock in hand, uh, or the, um, mainly it's the markets, supermarkets, uh, they will gain from inflation as well. And uh, finally, the group that will uh, gain from inflation are the investors. Investors can enjoy a boost if they hold assets in markets affected by inflation. For example, those who are invested in real estate might see a rise in the price of their properties or they could demand higher rents from tenants. So for example, if you have purchased a house like this one, uh, it's pretty beautiful, right? And uh, you have this house and there is inflation. So when there is inflation, the uh, the prices of properties also normally increase. So uh, if the price of your property was one million dollars uh, before inflation, after inflation it has increased. Let's assume it has increased to dollar one point two million dollars. So uh, not only you have gained, but you can also demand more rent from tenants if there were tenants living in this property. So, uh, if uh, I mean the people who have uh, real estate, who have investments in real estate, uh, they also gain from inflation. And this applies to uh, other uh, sectors as well, where the investors, uh, the price of their assets increase. So, whenever uh, the price of investors' assets increase due to inflation, they are gaining. So. That's it. These are the groups that came from inflation. I hope uh, you understand these groups. If you have any other question regarding who benefits from inflation or if you can think of uh, some other groups who benefit from inflation, you can write that down in the comment section. Or if you have any question, comment section. Uh, <clears throat> so I will see you guys in the next part uh, where, we will, where we will discuss uh, um, uh, something, uh, something more interesting about inflation. So. See you guys. Take care.